Welcome to Old North Church, one of America's most important historic icons. Its official name is Christ Church in the city of Boston. It was here that the American Revolution began. After Bostonians dumped the tea in the harbor in December of 1773, the town of Boston became a place full of tension. Parliament reacted to the Tea Party by abrogating many of the rights and liberties that Bostonians had long cherished. And then they sent a military man, a general, to be the governor of the province. The people of Boston and Massachusetts reacted to defend their rights. They established their own government. They called it the Provincial Congress. It met out in the town of Concord and elected as its leader, John Hancock, to be their president. They began to collect arms to defend themselves in case the British troops should try to leave Boston. Here within the town, British authority was collapsing. The royal governor was under pressure to do something, to do something. The Sons of Liberty were ready to resist. And so they had a plan. The plan was that if ever the British troops did leave Boston, the alarm would be sent out to all of the communities surrounding the town for the men to rise and take their muskets to defend their rights against the Redcoats. On the evening of April the 18th, 1775, the town was alive. British troops were gathering down at the edge of the water. Everyone knew they could see that these troops were preparing to march. Spies told the Sons of Liberty that the British troops were preparing to march to Concord. They were going to Concord to seize the munitions that the Americans had been gathering. This was the moment when the plan came into effect. Paul Revere, perhaps Boston's best craftsman, a silversmith whose manufactures were elegant. It was Revere who was the patriot messenger. It was to be his assignment that when called upon to ride into the countryside to warn the British soldiers. There came a tap on Revere's door, North Square. Revere opened the door and there stood a messenger from the Sons of Liberty to tell Mr. Revere, the troops are marching tonight. They're on their way to Lexington and to Concord. You must ride to warn the countryside. While Revere prepared to leave, in the meantime, another plan began to unfold. There had been concern, of course, that Mr. Revere might not be able to make it out of the town or even into the countryside. He might be captured, intercepted by the Redcoats. And so the plan was to warn the people on the other side of the river, the people in Charlestown, that the British were coming. In the 18th century, there were only two ways to leave the town of Boston. You could go by land, that is along a long neck of land, or you could go by sea, that is across the river. And so the plan was that if the British left by land, one lantern would be displayed in the belfry of the old North Church. If on the other hand, the British would cross the river and land in Charlestown, taking a different route, then the signal would be two lanterns, one if by land, two if by sea. As Revere was preparing to cross the river to Charlestown, here in this church, two men came in into the darkness, Robert Newman and Captain Pulling. According to the plan, they now knew that the Redcoats were going to cross the river and march on to Concord. And so the signal would be two lanterns. Carefully, these two men climbed the nearly 15-story high belfry, each of them carrying a lantern. And there in the window at the very top, they displayed the two lanterns, only for a brief moment. They certainly did not want the British to see the signal. The display was made, two lanterns. The British were marching, and they were coming by sea. In the meantime, Revere, 
was being rowed across the Charles River underneath the stern of the British Man of War Somerset. He landed in Charlestown and took horse and immediately began to ride and ride and ride out through Medford, Cambridge, towards Lexington, towards Concord. En route, he did not cry out, the British are coming, the British are coming. That would have seemed rather silly. After all, we were all British. As Revere rode through the countryside to warn of the advance of the British troops, the plan, another part of it, began to unfold. For he was not the only rider. Others now began to ride through the countryside as well to spread the alarm. He made it to Lexington, and there in Lexington, he went to the Hancock Clock House, where John Hancock and Samuel Adams were staying. As he rode up to the Hancock Clock House, the guard warned him, be quiet, be quiet. You'll wake up Mr. Hancock and Mr. Adams. They'll have reason enough to wake up, was Revere's response. He warned Hancock and Adams that the British were coming. He waited for a few moments, and then he was joined by William Dawes, another post rider who had been sent out from Boston to warn the countryside. And then together, Mr. Dawes and Mr. Revere began to ride towards Concord. As they made their way towards Concord, they encountered a third man, Dr. Prescott. And Dr. Prescott had been in Lexington on a late night date with his girlfriend, and he was on his way home to Concord. He persuaded Mr. Revere and Mr. Dawes that he was a high son of liberty, and so together the three men rode. Prescott, living in the neighborhood, knew the countryside. Revere and Dawes were less acquainted. As they rode towards Concord, they encountered a British patrol that had been set out in advance. Dawes and Revere were captured. Prescott leaped across a stone wall, rode through the fields, and made it all the way to Concord. In the meantime, Revere and Dawes were being interrogated by the British soldiers. They told them that the whole countryside was alarmed, and after a while, the soldiers let those two men go to ride back to warn the British who were coming towards Lexington that their secret trip, their secret march, was hardly a secret anymore.